Good morning. My name is Lilia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Vallejo Drive Church online worship service. May you feel God's presence as we rejoice together. Happy Sabbath! I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my savior, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. 
I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The ropes of death encompassed me, and the torrents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God for help. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry for help before him came into his ears. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation. Therefore I will give thanks to you among the nations, Lord, and I will sing praises to your name. Amen. Sabbath. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. 
I have some church life announcements that I am so excited to bring to you. And the first one is our SOS thrift store is doing a rummage sale. Pastor Linda just has so many awesome vi visions for the developing SOS team. And um, part of that requires a little more space. So we're doing a rummage sale. So if you bring $10, we give you a bag, whatever you can fit in that bag is uh, yours to take home. So invite your neighbors, um, invite family members, come on over. That's gonna be all of the Tuesdays in November. Um, the next thing that I want to uh, give a shout out to is our Kids Connection Live is going to be the first Sabbath of every month starting on November 7. Um, and that will be at 9 a.m. at graceunconditional.com slash kids connection. So if you know any kids, um, if you want to bring your neighbors uh, to be involved with that, uh, we'd love to have just as many kids participating in those live services as possible. It just makes it so much more fun. Uh, we also have the parents of our Kids Connection community have um, started a Kids Connection Bible study. So they have been developing um, a community uh, for supporting and encouraging parents of Kids Connection, and they have just been doing an awesome job. So now it is developed into a Bible study where um, parents can grow and just encourage one another, support one another as they're growing in their relationship with Christ. Um, so that will be at 2.30 p.m. And the link is also on our website. So take a look to check that out. If you know any parents that um, would really love to uh, just be a part of that kind of community, it would be awesome to have the more people, the better. Also, our virtual chancel choir is always taking, uh, accepting s uh, singers to join. So if you would like to be a part of that, if you know someone who would love to um, be a part of just sharing their musical gifts, um, give our choir director, Helen, a call, shoot her an email, um, and we have her contact information on our site. Um, please just reach out to her so you can get involved or point someone that you know who would love to get involved um, towards her and she can give you all the details. Uh, November 21 is our live service communion. And if you don't wanna make the communion at home, we're gonna give a recipe in case you do wanna make it at home. But if you are not able to, um, we have ordered pre-packaged kits. We didn't make these kits, they were ordered. Um, they're clean for COVID safety um, and they will be ready to pick up on that week. So from the 16th to the 20th, set aside some time to stop by in the morning um, and pick up your kits if you would like. Um, Audrey will be there uh, facilitating on um, those pickups. So if you need any help, just make a call to the office and we can definitely hang, help you out with those things. And as we, friends, as we continue to grow as a church, we've seen bat baptisms, we're currently scheduling baby dedications. Um, we just want to encourage and support our families. Uh, so please, please feel free to uh, reach out and let us know what the community uh, can do to support our growing families because just because we've been in separation we are still seeing all kinds of growth and uh, it would be awesome the more that we can uh, be involved the more that we can support we are here um, for you so I hope you all have a wonderful Sabbath and I will see you later bye Centric love. May they see Jesus in our hearts when we are set aside. And may they know Him with a theocentric love. May they see Jesus in our hearts when we are set aside. And may they know Him with a theocentric love. Centric love for oh, well, a preparing for his return. Mold us together with a theocentric love. Oh, we are waiting and watching for his return. Yeah.
Greetings, church family. Happy Sabbath to you. A few years ago, Sally and I traveled to Columbus, Ohio, to attend our niece's graduation ceremony from Ohio State University. The keynote speaker that day in his remarks included a story of how Ohio State University had come into existence. Back in 1862, right in the middle of the Civil War, when it wasn't clear who was going to win that war, many were even wondering, was there still going to be a United States of America? President Lincoln and the Congress made a bold choice. They took a leap of faith in the American experiment. They passed the Moral Land Grant Act which allocated 17,400,000 acres of land, which when sold, yielded an endowment, which was sufficient to fund the creation of land-grant colleges, which became the foundation of our nation's system of state colleges and universities. Today, our country, our church, finds itself in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, which seems to have no end in sight. It keeps us physically divided from each other. The church family, I want you to remember Jesus said to us, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. 
Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 14, 27. I am appealing to you to have faith. Just as our country's leaders had faith in the American future in the middle of the Civil War, we need to be of good courage and have faith in God's kingdom, which is in the middle of a cosmic war. Our Creator, Redeemer God, will not forsake us. He will see us through. In fact, He's already won the war. And we can have the assurance to know that He'll win this pandemic battle too. Now, our church this past week has just begun a new two-year term. The newly elected officers of our church are taking on the mission of the Leo Drive. And even though we still can't meet in person on Sabbath right now, our church is still functioning. And that means we still have expenses to cover for running our physical plant, for bringing you these church services every week, for paying our employees, for funding the many ministries of service through which the gospel is still going out into our community. When it became clear that this pandemic was not going away quickly and we were facing a serious financial shortfall, the Finance Committee and the Church Board took action, establishing a budget that reflected our situation. This emergency COVID-19 budget has consistently been, for most months, higher than actual expenses. However, here's the rub, Church family. The reality is, is that our church family has consistently, in their giving, fallen below these lowered expenses. We have to up our game, church family. We have to do better. We need to be willing to demonstrate our faith that God is bringing us through this time of crisis. He's promised to do it. Do you believe his promises? You know, when Moses made an appeal to the children of Israel to contribute to the building of a place of meeting in the desert, Exodus 35, 21 tells us, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved him and brought the Lord's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting and for its service. I appeal to you, church family, listen to that still small voice stirring you and moving you to action. Act today. Give to your church. You can give by mailing a check. You can give by stopping off and dropping it off in person at the church. You can go online and give through our website to a link for AdventistGiving.org. Thank you in advance for your faithfulness. Have a blessed Sabbath, church family. In the kingdom of the living God, there is a mighty fortress, a secret hiding place that is safe from danger. This mighty fortress is found by trusting God. Yes, all who draw near to God by faith find this place of protection and peace. It is a wonderful place where fear and worry are replaced with confidence and courage. Those who put their trust in God Discover the safest shelter. Outside, the world is filled with dangers, including a wicked enemy. This enemy is like a cruel bird catcher who spends his days setting traps 
and his knights thinking of ways to capture and destroy. But like a mother bird folding her wings around her babies to protect them, God wraps himself around his children and saves them from every trap and hidden danger. God pulls his precious ones in close and guards them. The enemy tries to fill the darkness with terrors, but God's children need not fear the nighttime. Wild wolves, disease, even death itself, none of these things can overcome God's children. Even in the darkness, the light of God goes forth. The darkness can never put out this light, shining as a constant reminder that all who follow God are safe and will find victory over every danger. The enemy not only attacks in the darkness, but in the daytime as well. Even when the sun shines its brightest, the enemy's evil plans fly at God's chosen ones like deadly arrows. But even the cleverest of his weapons will fail. Though disaster may be all around, and many people may fall into the enemy's traps, those who trust in God can stand confidently. The Lord always pulls his children close in times of trouble. When danger strikes, God is their strength. At the Lord's command is a vast army of angels. As part of God's limitless protection, these heavenly forces stand ready to obey God's command to guard his children. Satan and his wicked army of demons cannot defeat the Lord's mighty angels. All who challenge them are sure to fail. Those under God's protection never need to fear. God's power is so great that it transforms his children into mighty warriors. They find victory no matter the dangers they face. If the enemy sends prowling lions, God will shut their mouths. If the enemy sends slithering cobras, God will give his servants the power to crush these snakes under their feet. At God's command, Satan and all his forces must run and hide. There is no enemy who can defeat God's children. God makes this promise to all who love and trust him. Call on me and I will answer you. I will stand beside you in times of trouble. God not only rescues his children, but he also rewards them beyond their wildest dreams. They will inherit God's wonderful promise of eternal life. Yes, those who trust in the Lord will live with him forever in heaven. Make the Lord Jesus your fortress and hiding place and receive his promise of salvation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we, your children, we come to you this day to worship you, to bless you, and to thank you for your goodness, for your kindness, and your tender mercies over us. Father, we are not ignorant of how you have been gracious to us, how you have been mindful to us, keeping us all this year through these tough times. But Father, we can say that you have been for us. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We bring ourselves again today to your throne of grace. We come as your children. I come with my brothers and my sisters to ask for your ongoing protection and care over us. Oh, Father, we pray for a heart that continues to be thankful, a heart that continues to be grateful for all that you have been doing for us, that in spite of all that is going on around us, that, Father, we will learn to dwell in your presence. Lord, I pray for your comfort and your courage, for your strength, for your peace, for your joy, 
for each and every one of us. Lord, we ask for our nation at this time that you will keep us through these times, Father. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Father, we pray that you will continue to prepare us for the soon return of our Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, let the love of God continue in our hearts, strengthened by you, warmed up by you, Lord, so that at the end of the day, with our sins forgiven, covered with the righteousness of Jesus, we always stand before your throne, blameless, having made it through these times. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
It was a time of monumental change in European history. The late Middle Ages from 1250 to 1500 AD experienced a flux unlike any other at that time. In England, many people who were living in the serfdom system, where they were basically indentured slaves, were starting to rise up and revolt against this way of living. The Black Death had been sweeping through Europe in the 1300s, taking about 75 to 200 million lives from Europe all the way down to North Africa. And the Catholic Church, who was used to dealing with outside theological contentions, was now having to deal with lots of questions and calls for reform from within. It was in this part coming out of the late Middle Ages that Martin Luther, a man who grew up in Germany, a believer, was afraid of dying. And so he entered the monastery, became a monk. But in the monastery, he experienced a lot of guilt in his own personal life and was looking for a gracious God to deal with that guilt. He turned to reading through the scriptures, and many ideas were radically transforming what he was being taught in the monastery and being challenged there in his own mind. There Martin Luther began to develop his own thoughts about what it means to, to be righteous by God's grace and his faith alone, and how the importance of Scripture speaking to the Christian life was to him. He would soon transform the whole world, even in the midst of chaos, even when dealing with guilt or facing death, or even when many in the society at that time were losing a sense of meaning. Martin Luther discovered that God could come through for them. It's like our world today in 2020. Many people are experiencing the throes and the heartache of the pandemic we're experiencing with COVID-19. Almost 200,000 people have died related to the COVID illness. A lot of people are losing their jobs, and they're questioning, where's God in all this? What's the meaning of my life now that everything is turned upside down? It's interesting, isn't it, how in history, the cycle repeats itself. But as God spoke to Martin Luther and the people of that time, which started a huge theological revolution that has transformed our world as we know it, even until today, so you and I can experience a transformed life, even in the midst of chaos. So what was Martin Luther's big contribution. There were a few of them, but the one we're going to look at right now are the 95 Theses. It was on this day, October 31, 1517, in Wittenberg, Germany, that Martin Luther, who was now a moral theology professor, went to the door of the church and nailed the 95 Theses. This was his argument against the Catholic Church's indulgences that they were selling to people to help their loved ones or maybe even their future selves who were going into purgatory to get forgiven, be able to not go through the pains of the flames and the fires as much, and to be able to move on to the next portion of their afterlife. Here Martin Luther, through the study of the Holy Word, the Bible, decided that for himself he was going to stand with Scripture and not tradition. In the 95 Thesis, his argument wasn't just against indulgences. He saw indulgences as a way of inhibiting people from truly living this Christian spiritual life of repentance. The first of the 95 Theses sets the tone for the rest of the document that Martin Luther nailed to that door in Wittenberg, Germany. It reads like this. When our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, Repent, Matthew 4.17, He willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. As you read through the document of the 95 Thesis, Martin Luther is concerned with people's lives being transformed and experience a genuine renewal in Christ. For him, the indulgences that the Catholic Church was selling so that family members and loved ones can be spared the pains of purgatory, Martin Luther felt that these indulgences inhibited people from actually making real substantive changes in their lives i.e. experiencing true repentance. Martin Luther read through the book of Romans, and he established key doctrinal beliefs and concepts that we live today because of his reading of Romans and his translating the Bible into his native tongue, German. Martin Luther came across this text in Romans 2.4, and it must have given him insight in what repentance looks like and where it starts. Romans 2.4 says, 
Do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and restraint and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? The Apostle Paul writes that it is God's kindness that inspires us to transform our lives, that it's God's kindness that draws us to himself, that it leads us to this experience of repentance. In Acts chapter 5, the Apostle Peter describes repentance as a gift from Jesus Christ. That this gift in us helps us be transformed to experience a new life in Christ. We don't have to be prisoners of the old ways of living that have harmed ourselves and our relationship with God and others, but that this relationship that we have is because God has made it possible for us to repent. There's a story in the Bible when Jesus met a man named Zacchaeus. It is a great example of repentance looks like in action. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector in his area, which means he trained other tax collectors how to defraud people, because that's how Zacchaeus made his money and became rich. The Bible says he defrauded people, charged them more than what he needed to do. Jesus came to town one day, followed by a large crowd, and Zacchaeus, being a man of short stature, wanted to see Jesus. He climbed up in a tree, looking down, watching as the crowd was passing by. Then Jesus stops looks up at Zacchaeus and calls him down the tree and says, I'm coming to your house today. Imagine the joy that such a request would have inside the heart of Zacchaeus. Here is a man who wanted to see and know this Jesus, and Jesus actually wanted to spend time with him. What greater kindness is there than someone of such stature of Jesus, of power, of joy, of character, of influence? would even want to spend time with someone like Zacchaeus. While they were en route to Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus stops and he turns to Jesus and said, For those I defrauded, I'm not only going to pay them back, but I'm going to pay extra money. That is an example of what genuine repentance looks like. It's when we get inspired by being with God and seeing God's kindness to us. It is watching as a man says, You know what? I don't want to live the old ways I've lived before. You and I have issues in our lives. We may not be defrauding people of money, but we've defrauded God of our love, our adoration, making Him first in our lives. We've defrauded others by maybe through our lies or misconceptions or maybe just being selfish in relationships to others. Whatever it is, there's always something for us to repent. And like Zacchaeus, who had an experience with Jesus and Jesus' kindness to him, we too can take a stand and say, Lord, I want to change my life. I don't want to live the same way. I want to restore when I need to restore. I want to turn around when I need to turn around. And by the power of God, He can do that in our lives. For me, I've experienced five key experiences in repentance that I pray will be helpful to you. The first one is, remember the kindness of God. In the title of my sermon, God's Kindness in the Rearview Mirror, It's a call to look back in our lives to see every time God has been kind to us, where His goodness and His blessings flowed into our lives, even at those moments when we felt we didn't deserve them. This is a way of opening our hearts to the way God wants us to live, because He's been so good to us. It just inspires us to want to live His way. The second experience that we have when it comes to repentance is recognizing our need. We have a serious sin issue. We're so full of sin, we're focused on ourselves, what we want, and sometimes we harm our relationship with God and with other people as well. Our sin goes so deep, our depravity goes so far, that it feels like we're in a pit that we can't climb out of. But this is where the good news comes in, in the third experience of repentance. We are called to come just as we are. Jesus doesn't require us to change our lives before we come to Him because He knows we cannot change our lives by ourselves. So when we come as we are, we're saying, Lord, this is where I'm at. I'm struggling with sin. I'm struggling with this habit. I'm struggling with selfishness. I just can't seem to get over this behavior that I know is not pleasing to you and it's hurting others in my life. Just be real with God and come as you are is the third experience. The fourth experience is, as we come as we are, we are to choose to submit to the Holy Spirit's leadership and influence. It is the Holy Spirit at work in us 
that transforms our lives and makes repentance possible. Repentance is turning away from what I used to live, and now I'm living God's way, which will bless my relationship with Him and with other people. And that's only possible because the power of the Holy Spirit makes it possible. In the fifth experience, we receive Christ's character in us. Ephesians chapter 3 talks about us being rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. He lives inside of us, and He brings His character into us so that we can live that out with others. His character of patience, kindness, forgiveness, long-suffering, love, joy, every fruit of the Holy Spirit is expressed in the character of Christ in us, and we get to live that out. I pray that through these five experiences, you will experience true, genuine, and lasting repentance. There's a quote from Ellen White, writing to a sister at that time, a sister in Christ. She says, You may come to him as a child comes to his parents, saying, Here, Lord, I have carried myself as though I could save myself for a long time. My burdens are too heavy for me to carry longer. Thou canst bear them for me, he says. I will take them. With everlasting kindness will I have mercy upon thee. For Martin Luther, spiritual freedom begins with repentance. It's what started the document of the 95 Thesis. For him, repentance was to be experienced in what, quote, the entire life of the Christian. And that is made possible by Christ's kindness to us. Imagine what God can do when all His people consider His kindnesses and it inspires them to turn their lives over to Him and to let Him transform their lives through the power of the Spirit and receiving Jesus' character in us. People would flock to our church if the whole church experienced repentance. God is working with one man, one woman at a time until the whole body of Christ is brought into His beautiful character that we can share with the world. I invite each of you to take the call of Martin Luther in living a, an entire life of repentance. I too want to make that choice that I will live a life of repentance every single moment of the day and watch the Holy Spirit transform me into the man God wants me to be. A transformed people will transform the world. And that happens with God's kindness expressed in us. First published as sheet music with the title, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, A Hymn of Comfort. Martin Luther wrote the words and music of this hymn. It was written in 1529 during the aftermath of a plague that devastated the German town of Wittenberg. May the Holy Spirit open our hearts to receive God's comfort as we sing together. A mighty fortress is our God. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amidst the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe does seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. with death.
Our prayer at Vallejo Drive Church is that you will live and experience the kindness of God. As we look back on our lives, God's kindness expressed in many different ways to us leads us to repentance, to want a transformed life in Him. And by the power of God, through the Holy Spirit, with Jesus' character living inside of our hearts, we can live a life of freedom in Him. Let us pray. God, thank you for the gift of repentance that you give freely to every person. Thank you that your Holy Spirit wants to dwell in us and that Jesus, being rooted and grounded in love in our hearts, can transform our lives by his character. As we go forward, God, may you lead us to transform this world. In your name we pray. Amen.